Yeah. Okay, just to confirm, members, that we are court and on we have joining us by Starleaf today Sinead Bradley, Gary Middleton, Rosemary Barton, and Morris Bradley. Um, just want to confirm that everybody there, there can hear and see us. Yeah, okay. And just if you want to indicate, if you want to ask any questions, if you just use the hand raise facility on your Starleaf. And if you can do the needful with all tablets and, and phones, please. I'd also just to advise mem like to advise members that we have received today Catherine Kelly's resignation, letter of resignation. So Catherine will no longer be on the committee and obviously we will be re replacing Catherine at, at a later stage. So just to confirm that for members and can the clerk just let, tell us if anybody, there have been any delegated votes? Yes, uh, Chair, so John O'Dowd has delegated his vote to yourself. And that, Thank you. that's the only delegated vote. And then the only apology we have is from John O'Dowd also. Okay, so agenda item two then is our draft minutes of our previous meeting. Are members content that they are true reflection of proceedings? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And I, agenda item three then is matters arising. I have no matters arising under that. Okay. Item four, members, is the item in relation to member statements. And you'll recall that the committee agreed to write to all parties and independent members to seek their views on the merits of introducing arrangements to have a short period in plenary during which members have the opportunity to pull issues, put issues rather briefly on the record. The deadline for responses has now passed and the committee has received responses from Sinn Féin, the DUP, Ulster Unionists and Alliance. Um, a further reminder was issued to parties and independent members who hadn't provided views and at page 10 of your pack you will have seen the cover note from the clerk. Page 14 is response received from Sinn Féin. Pages 3 to 5 of tabled items are the responses from the DUP, Ulster Unionists and Alliance. So today we should be given consideration to the responses. Now, given that I, I actually thought that Jerry would have been here today, so really what I was going to put to both Jerry and the SDLP is if they wanted, I am content that we wait to get the responses before our next meeting, but that would have been based on the fact that they could have confirmed today that we would have responses before our next meeting. Um, Jerry is obviously not here, and if Sinead just wants to, sorry Sinead, apologies, if Sinead just wants to confirm, if you want us to wait until the next meeting Sinead in order to give your party an opportunity to respond, or if you're content to put your views on the record today, whichever you prefer to do, I'm content, we move forward with either way. We can't hear you, Sinead. Just need to get Sinead into the spotlight there, if possible, which... Do I need um, No, broadcasting should do that for us in a second. Open. Okay. Sinead, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. So, okay. For, uh, Chair, could I apologise if our document hasn't been received by the committee? I had noticed it wasn't on the list and I've made inquiries, but there is a response which I've had sight of. So apologies if it's not there. Um, and if you don't mind, I would rather, because it, I think one of the things that started to come out on, on this issue and the, on the next that we'll look at was the timing issue that maybe it wasn't, you know, it was urgent. Um, on some of the things. So if you don't mind, I'd appreciate it if we could put it off so we can speak to all, to all responses. Sinead, I, I'm content. As long as you, you know that there is a response coming forward, then I think, in, in yeah. fairness, I, I'm content that we do that. So we, we'll, we'll put that on the agenda for the next meeting uh, with anticipated response from your party, at least, Sinead, and, and maybe the 
the clerk can speak to Jerry or, yes. or email Jerry just in relation to people before profits response. Is that okay? So we'll move forward in, in that way then. Hiya Tom, just welcome Tom to the meeting. So our next agenda item then is agenda item five and that's the proxy voting. And again, the committee wrote to all parties and independent members to seek their views. The a reminder was issued to those who had not responded and the deadline for responses has now passed. The committee has received eight responses. Um, a page 16 of your pack is a covering memo which summarises the responses. Pages 22 to 69 of the main pack are the responses received. Page 4 of tabled items is response received from the Ulster Unionist Party. And a page 71 is a research paper on proxy voting. So, Sinead, I think you had said that on this issue also are we awaiting a response from your party? So I'm not sure if the clerk can confirm if it actually reached. No, we, we haven't yet. yet had the response okay. from SDLP Sinead. No. Yes, well, certainly it was, uh, apologies because I did have to run away from a computer there and there was a distraction, but it's certainly this one that I have had sight of and there is a quite a detailed document I can share that. But uh, again, I read through um, the responses, but there are no, I don't want to jump ahead of others, but I noticed that um, you know, there, there was, I could see threads of agreement. And again, the timing issue was one, whether it was in the midst of COVID that we take on this piece of work, um, which I don't have huge issue with. But again, I apologise. Yes, that is the one that I absolutely can be assured I can nearly afford it myself, but I'd need to get that approval. Okay, Sinead, Sh mm -hmm. the, the approach that I was going to suggest is that we would ask um, research to come and present to the committee next week, so or at the next meeting rather. Yeah. So obviously we'll have your response before then as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we would ask the, the some options to come forward to the committee after the briefing from research. So that, that's the approach that I was going to suggest that we take. And I think you're right, there certainly are some some threads there that would show that there, there is agreement. And even in relation to some of the issues that have been raised, issues of concern, I think most of them could be easily answered and easily dealt with. So I, I do think that it is something that we want to look into. Probably for me, this would be the one I would prioritise on a personal level because it's been something I've been very keen to have looked at for, for a long period of time. I would prioritise it over the statements because there are other opportunities for getting things onto the floor of the chamber. Whereas in this case, I think this is something that we need to deal with in this mandate because I don't want us going into a selection process for new MLAs where we have people who are excluding themselves based on the fact that they may be young, I'm thinking particularly to be honest and just be perfectly frank about it, where we have young women who may well exclude themselves on the basis that they may want to take periods of maternity leave and feel that they can't. And I want to ensure them that this house is doing everything to make this place a welcome place for all those who wish to put their names forward for elected life. So. Um, if people are, are content, if all members are content, that's how we'll go forward. We'll ask research to come next week or ne to the next meeting. And then we will look at options in relation to how we can deal with this issue. Uh, and that gives your party an option, an opportunity to get the response yeah. in as well. Yeah. Chair, Gar Gary, just briefly on that? I completely agree with your your, your comments. I absolutely agree with in terms of the research element. There, there was one element, element uh, maybe the clerk could clarify it for us in terms of, uh, and you'll notice in our party response, we, we had said that we absolutely are content with uh, proxy voting continuing for the, um, for, for the future. Uh, one issue which is a real problem is around the 930 Deadline for appointing, um, a, you know, or, or, or making proxy arrangements. So, in the cases where a party hasn't handed over full control to, you know, for example, whips, so some of our members have their own vote, but if during the day for some reason that person has to uh, either self isolate in the current environment or there's a, an emergency, 
that, that vote is lost because unless the, 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 you know, the notification was put in before 9.30, then it's not possible to transfer your vote. So is there something that can be done in the short, like literally short term to try and address that issue or does it have to be looked at in the wider package and who is responsible for taking that decision? Can that be done through the business committee? I appreciate I sit on it, so it could be raised there, but maybe the clerk could give us some steer on that. I will let the clerk come in on this, but it is something that we did have, a, I did have some conversation with the clerk in relation to, and there are reasons for it, there are very genuine reasons for it, and, and I suppose it is about ensuring that everything is kept right and that everybody's covered, and there, there could potentially be legal issues if there isn't a cut-off period or cut off time, Gary, but I will let the clerk come in on it just to, to go into further detail. Yeah, Gary, yes, and I noted that on, in the DEP's response about talking about the half-nine deadline. And um, the, the temporary standing orders that we have at the minute do provide provision for how proxy voting would work under the current circumstances. Obviously, if we were looking to, or if your party were wanting to look at amending that, um, that would take... We would have to look at that in the round, as in ourselves as procedures committee, but I think you're right. We would also need to talk to business committee about that, and I think we'd also need to engage with officials in the business office about that, who are actually the ones who are, are collating that information you know, on plenary days. But it's certainly something, if you want to, I'm happy to take that away and then come back at the next meeting uh, with more information on that as to how we could take that forward if the committee wanted to do that. That's no problem. Are you content with that? Yes, that would be perfect. Thank you. So I just to know where we're going with it. I think it would benefit everybody if there was a bit more flexibility. But I do take your point, Chair, that you know there has to be some sort of deadline uh, in all of these things, and we need to keep ourselves right. But I think that it's maybe just a bit rigid at the moment, um, and, and we're talking maybe some feedback on that at the next meeting. Thank you. I think it was around the practicalities, but yeah. to, in fairness, to allow us to get more detail, I think that. That will let the clerk come back with more information. That's okay. right. Um, are members content that we move on from this item, or do any, does anybody have any further comments? I want to make no. Okay, take silence as a all in agreement. Agenda item six then is correspondence, and at pages ninety five to ninety nine of your pack are responses from a number of committees confirming their content with the proposals of the temporary provisions in Stanton Order 110 to 116. And there's also the latest newsletter then from the Human Rights Commission at page 100. Are members content to note those items? I have no comments in relation to them unless anybody else has. No? Content. Thank you. Um, then our next agenda item is agenda item 7. And that's our forward work programme. So at the next committee meeting, we will consider responses received regarding the review of LCMs. And then the committee will also consider how it wishes to proceed in respect of member statements and in relation to the, the proxy voting. So those, are, those will be our, our items for the next meeting, if members are content. Great, yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you, Tom. Thank you. So, Chairperson's Business, I actually wanted to raise an issue under Chairperson's Business that um, it was really something that Jerry had raised previously and I thought he might have actually raised it today and um, he's not here so I, I, I think I'll go ahead and raise it anyway because it's something that we should deal with. So, members, we had, Jerry had written to the Commission in relation to the potential for um, hybrid proceedings within the chamber, so something similar to what we have for committees. So where a member or a minister is isolating, where they're still potentially able to take part in chamber business. We had got a letter back to say that there wasn't the facilities at this time, or we got information back to say there wasn't facilities at this time for that. Yep. Um, and there may be difficulties with putting in place the facilities for that. I think that given there have been a, a number of ministers who've had to isolate and we've had to drop business off the um, drop items off the business of the chamber because of that, that this has been something that we definitely need to look at because we don't want business to start dropping off or falling off or potential for legislation to be delayed and 
I mean, Sinead is on the Justice Committee with me and will be well aware that we have a very tight legislative programme, so we don't want COVID to potentially delay any of those pieces of legislation. So in light of that, would members be content if myself and Nick, um, and I would open this up to Tom as well as Deputy Chair, meet with the officials of the Commission to have a conversation around that, whether they intend to put the facilities into the Chamber, and if they do, then we could go ahead with looking at amending the standing orders so that the two things would be done in line rather than us waiting till they do their business and then us starting. So we could, we could both be, be running in tandem in terms of dealing with the issues. Are members content that, that we do that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and do members have any comments yeah. or, or issues they want to raise around that, Sinead? You're on silence, Sinead. There we go. Apologies. Can you hear me now, Chair? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah. Um, Chair, yes, absolutely. I think you're right. And I know it's a really difficult time, um, particularly even for the Chair in the Assembly Chamber, because I'm sure others have noticed, and I'm guilty of this as well, given the restrictions of the numbers allowed into the Chamber, there's an increase in the in the number of people not in their place um, when a, at a particular point in time. And I just wondered, is there scope there? For example, yesterday um, I had a bit of a dramatic entrance into the chamber, but it was just, and, and, you know, the chair was right, I'm not disputing it, I wasn't in my place, and he had just called it, and it was just an expression, of, you know, whatever. But to the point then, I'll, Quite a few members after that, subsequent to that, also were not in their place. And the minister then ended up with five minutes allocated time unused, where he just drew that procedure to a close, a question time. And I wonder, is there scope for a bit of flexibility um, if a member did come in under topical, for example, and was still in the chamber and the minister was there, would the, the speaker have the ability to go back over? And use that a lot of time as opposed to just, you know, wrapping up business early um, and moving on because the day was running way ahead of itself and it was just compounding the problem as the day went on. Can the clerk come in on how, how we would approach yeah, that? Yeah, um, no? that's a slightly different issue, mm -hmm. uh, just in terms of one of the things that potentially how proceedings could bring is that members could ask their questions while not being in the chamber, if they have a listed oral, for example, or if they have a topical question. Um, topicals lend themselves quite well to that because the only member that would have a supplementary is the member that asked the topical. So it's a relatively easy thing to manage if members are accessing the chamber remotely. So I think on, on, on that particular aspect of it, uh, Sinead, then yes, certainly that's something that could be looked at as part of this committee's deliberations over hybrid proceedings. Um, outside of that, if it was just that members are on their way into the chamber or just the management of places within the chamber when they're limited, and I understand that that can be difficult when you only have three or four seats and you might have seven or eight members wanting to ask questions, that's a slightly different issue and is something that certainly the committee could look at, um, but that's actually more about proceedings of question time as opposed to hybrid proceedings. So um, obviously it's up to the committee how they want to proceed with that, but, but I think you could solve one problem by doing the other, if you see what I mean. Hybrid proceedings could take that issue away to a certain extent. Um, so it, it, it's obviously up to the committee how they want to proceed, but perhaps may I say that hybrid proceedings might actually solve issues of members not being in their place to a certain extent. I would be inclined to agree, Sinead, with, with, with Nick in terms of that the hybrid would, because I've, I've been in exactly the same position as yourself, where I'm, I'm run down to the, the chamber and trying to, get, trying to get a space to come in, and I know that a number of our own party members weren't in their place yeah. because their question was immediately after another, another member's question. So it, it is an issue, and I think that the, the hybrid or the potential for hybrid proceedings could deal with some of that. So are you content that we have the conversation with the Commission in the first instance and if we aren't seeing some kind of move in relation to that and we need something to be looked at in the more shorter term, then we come back to that at the next meeting? 
Yes, Chair, thank you. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I just think just be mindful of that problem while we're talking about the hybrid model. I think you're right. I think it's part of the solution. So just to keep that in the back of our mind when we're building it. Thank you. No, that, that, that's perfect, Sinead. Thank you. So we will arrange to do that meeting, myself and, and Tom and the clerk with the officials from the Commission. I don't have any other business. Chair, Chair, yes. Chair. yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, mine's actually not similar to Sinead's, but it's um, it's regarding the question time. Uh, for example, I, I've been down several days with, and I have certain qu questions I want to ask as follow ups. And you're not chosen, so you're sitting in a chamber, taking up spaces, etc., and yet you're not chosen, and that's a bit of a pain too, because. Uh, because you're in a chamber, you have to you have to sanitize, etc. After yourself, but you're in the chamber and not chosen, and I think that's not good. Good in the situation that we're in, either where we are all moving about so quickly. Um, Kirk, do you want to address that? Yeah. The, again. You seen the position yesterday, I, yes, Nick? Yes, Rosemary, I did see the position yesterday. Um, what, I, what I would say from a procedural point of view on that is that at the end of the day, it's entirely up to the speaker who or whoever is in the chair, whether it be the speaker or the, the principal deputy or one of the deputies, who they decide to pick for a supplementary question. And I know that they are often mindful about getting a range of views from across, across the chamber. I, at the same time, understand that there is pressure on positions within the chamber at the minute. Yeah. Um, in terms of Standing orders allow for supplementaries to be asked, but it is very much at the speaker's discretion as to who is picked um, to actually ask a supplementary. So we're getting into areas that aren't necessarily standing orders as such. That's more about um, the speaker's decisions on that. So I, I would suggest that, that perhaps that's not something necessarily for, for this committee as, as such. However, it could be raised with the speaker's office that you know that there have been issues around that. I was going to suggest. Yeah. I think maybe Rosemary, the way forward for you there might be to to write to the speaker. To write to the speaker. I, I think it's an I think it's an issue because of the limited seating. You know, I wouldn't mind sit, but I was taking up a seat maybe belonging to someone that someone else wanted in. I was waiting to ask on a certain question, and I was taking up a seat. If ads, you're taking up limited seating. I, I still think it's going to be something for the speaker's office to deal with, and I think that you, that it's. I would suggest that you write to the speaker's office or you speak to the speaker's office in relation to it, because the speaker is going to be ultimately the person who decides, and um, who's chosen in relation to supplementary. And I suppose my own view would be, the initial thing is the question and the initial supplementary. That person has got been chosen to pick a question and everybody after that is just really is the luck of the draw and trying to get the balance. But I under I also understand where you're coming from. So I, I would if I was in your position and had that concern, I think the, the approach that I would take is to is to contact the speaker's office directly and raise my concern. Yeah. No, it wouldn't for me it wouldn't be a concern if everybody was in the chamber and things were normal and you're not you're not chosen, you're not chosen, that's fine. But it's when we have such limited space and such limited limited time to move in and out where actually it's a, it has a knock on effect. Again, what we're looking at in terms of the hybrid proceedings could potentially deal with that because you wouldn't have yeah. the same issues around the moving in and yeah. out because you can be in the chamber remotely. So yes. I, I, hopefully that will deal with a, lo a lot of the issues and concerns that we have. Yeah. Um, so we'll go ahead and arrange that meeting. Do members have any other business that they want to raise? I don't have any other business. No. no? Okay. No. So members are content. So on, based on that, then, we only have to agree the date and time of our next meeting, which is Wednesday the 18th of November at 2.30, the same time, in room 29. And could I ask just that members do confirm with the clerks if they are going to be attending by Starleaf or not? Either confirm you will be attending or send apologies. It's just so that we know if we're going to be court because... I was a wee bit nervous today at the start of the meeting that I was going to be the only person in attendance and in fairness we've we've almost a full attendance but 
um, I just it, it would be much easier for us to plan if we can be sure of who will be attending. Even if that's to say you're not sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, members. Thank you. Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Committee Room 29.